Hey YouTube. So if you saw the previous video, you saw that on ride three we got a flat about uh, halfway through the day and have to replace the tire. So uh, because you don't want to run mixed tires on your side by side because different ride heights can cause problems for your differential and, and other problems. I've got to replace both tires because apparently these Bighorn tires are a little hard to find in this size right now. So I picked up a set of aftermarket tires and I'm going to replace those. So I thought I would uh, run through the process of replacing tire on a beadlock rim. So the first step is you know, remove your, your beadlock. You've got you know, a bunch of bolts around the, uh, the uh, edge, the perimeter. So you've got to remove that. And then, uh, then comes the hard part is getting the old tire off. And so you've got to break the bead on the back side of the rim. And so we're going to do that right now. Okay. To get this job done, we're going to need a handful of tools. We need a jack. We need some torque wrenches. We need some sockets and some extensions. A strap. A drill with an attachment comes in handy if you've got one can of WD-40 and then an air compressor and uh, a hose. So let's uh, let's dive into this and show you how to change out a tire on a beadlock rim. Okay so there's lots of ways to break the bead on the back side of the rim and what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna use a jack and my trailer to knock that bead loose. So the first thing I did was uh, sprayed a little bit of WD-40 around the uh, edge of the rim, so kind of give it a little bit of a uh, lube effect, so that'll make it a bit, little bit easier to to break that bead. Next, I'm going to pop the jack underneath the tire and start jacking it up, and you can see that right here, I've got a bar, and I'm going to use that bar on the back of my trailer to uh, press on the bead. So let's do that right now. As you can see we're just getting right up to the edge of the rim. So we're going to reposition and try again. There we go. We're off there. Okay. There we go. We're off. Okay, so with the B broken, now we just got to get the tire off the rim. And so that for that, we're going to use a bucket. And then we're going to place the rim on the bucket. With it on the bucket, all we've got to do is start working one side off. And it's off. Okay, so the new tires finally came in. You saw the process of removing the old tires off the beadlocks. So now let's take a look at how to install the new tires on the, on the beadlocks. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to clean up the rim to make sure there's no any burrs or anything that might get in the way of sealing uh, the, the tire. We're also going to blow out these holes and clear them out and make sure that there's nothing 
uh, obstructing the threads so that when we start to seat the, uh, the screws into the bead locks. Next we're going to spray a little bit of WD-40 around the edge of the tire. With that done, we're going to go ahead and now put the tire on. Now because I've got directional tires, i got to make sure I put them on the right way. If you've got non-directional, it doesn't matter, but with directional tires, you do want to make sure you get them oriented correctly. So we're just going to seat it on there like that. I'm going to move the camera over here. So you can see I've got it started. And then I'm just going to work it around. Until it just slides over. Just like that. Next we want to make sure our bead ring is nice and clean. So we're going to clean it up really well on both sides so that you get a good seal. Now there is an orientation to these so if you look at your ring closely you probably have something similar there's an indentation right here that goes where the valve stem is. So in this case my valve stems right here so my orientation is going to sit like that. So for this next part I'm going to use a bucket to set the rim on so that the tire hangs down and gravity becomes my friend pulls the tire down makes it a little bit easier to get the beater lock ring on. Okay, with the orientation of my ring sorted out and in the right spot, I'm going to start uh, putting the bolts in. I put a little bit of WD-40 on the bolts just to make them start a little bit easier. I'm only going to get a few threads in, just enough to hold it in place and not tighten it all the way down. Then I'm going to go over to a corner and secure the next one. you got to, again, being very careful to not cross-thread these things. If you can't do it with finger tight, if it starts to bind up, back it off and try again. You might have to put a little bit of pressure on the ring to get the next bolt started. Then come over to the next corner. And again, get it started by hand. a little pressure to give yourself a little bit of room to get it started and now you can go a little bit further in and repeat the process until you get them all started by hand now with all the bolts in by hand now we're going to start torquing them down now this is where you do need to stick to a pattern to uh, make sure you do it right so that you you properly seat the tire on the rim so um, if you've got a torque wrench that will go from anywhere from say three foot foot pounds up to you know 50 or 80 foot pounds or something like that, uh, that's great. Then you only need one torque wrench. If you don't, um, you know, like mine, I've got two different torque wrenches. I got one that does inch pounds and one that does foot pounds. My foot pounds one goes from about five foot pounds up to uh, 80 foot pounds, and my inch pound one goes from uh, 20 inch pounds to 200 inch pounds so um, neither one is and by itself is enough to get the job done so I've got to use two so on our first pass we're gonna do uh, right about uh, uh, three and a half four foot pounds now as I said there's a pattern you got to do um, it's basically in with a rim like this it's every fifth bolt so I always start with the first uh, bolt past the the stem.
and you can see it break right there. Now, this is a cheap torque wrench. I got it at Harbor Freight for 10 bucks on sale. So I don't exactly trust the accuracy of this. Uh, it's not going to be super precise. So one thing you should do before you start torquing anything down, especially as you start getting into tighter, uh, higher settings, go verify them on another bolt. Uh, make sure you're not over testing because another thing you don't want to have happen is to break one of these heads off. That would also ruin your day. Uh, so you know, go check, go test this against a, uh, another bolt that uh, is already you know seated properly. Um, so for example, in my case, I'm testing this against the front tires, which already have uh, the proper sport, uh, uh, torque settings on the rims. So I, before I went and uh, did that, I went and ran this against that one just to make sure that it's breaking uh, at the right point uh, to verify that I'm getting it uh, torqued down to the right specification. So first bolt down, I'm going to count five over, one, two, three, four, five, and I'm going to hit this one next. There it breaks. One, two, three, four, five. And there it breaks. One, two, three, four, five. Back to my original. I started with this one here, so now I'm going to start here. One, two, three, four, five. Now I move to the next one. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And the process just repeats until you got them all done. Okay, so at this point, they should all be at uh, about three and a half foot-pounds. So now I'm just going to do uh, a quick sanity check just to make sure they all made it there. Again, starting back at my original bolt. Okay, so now we're at three and a half foot-pounds all the way around. So now we're going to do the next round of torquing. We're going to take it up to about eight and a half, nine pounds. Again, starting here. Now to do that, now I'm moving over to my other torque wrench. And so now, with my wrench set up, I'm just going to repeat the process. Okay, and for the final pass, we're going to reset the wrench and now we're going to go to 12 pounds. You do need to check the specs of your rims and bead locks because uh, some rims might have, say, a 20 pound torque, uh, final torque. Um, in this particular case, the Yamaha bead lock rims uh, that uh, come with the car uh, spec out at 12 pounds uh, on the uh, bolts. Okay, so now we. Uh, go through our final round and, I, and as I said it uh, resets to 12 pounds. This is where you want to be really uh, precise on your measurement. So as I said this is uh, just a cheap uh, torque wrench so I don't truly tr trust it. So what I'm going to go do is go check this against the front bead locks. Since those were factory set those should be right at 12 pounds so if I adjust this to where they just barely uh, tighten the bolt on, on the front bead locks and break then I know I've got the right setting. Okay, so I verified this against the front rims, so now we're going to go ahead and finish tightening those back down. And again, starting here. Now, people will say it's different. Some people say you can go sequentially around. I'm going to go ahead and follow the five bolt pattern just to uh, make sure I'm consistent. Okay, and with that, the ring is set and ready to go. Next, we're going to use the strap. We're going to strap this thing in so we can start filling up with air. Okay, with the bead lock ring set and the bolts all torqued down to the proper specs, now we're going to start filling it up with air, but before they do that, we've got to put a strap on it to help hold the tire in place so that the bead on the back side will push out and seat properly. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and take it off this uh, bucket and put the strap on. So let's do that now. Okay, so now I'm going to put the strap on. Press the tire. With the strap.
strap in place, I'm going to go ahead and start putting the air in. Now what you'll see as I do this is the back side, the bead needs to set. So that's why we're putting the strap on here is to force the air to push the tire out and set the bead. When this bead sets, it will pop into place, uh, usually with a little, little snap. And you'll see that and hear it if the compressor doesn't kick on first. Okay, with the bead in place, I can now pull these off and finish airing it up. Now you can see the backside bead sets. Give it time, let me make sure there's no leaks or anything like that. Check it again uh, before you hit the trails. Make sure you got the right uh, air inflated into your tires and you should be good to go. And that's, that's how you do the bead locks.